everyone, Paul Ice, and welcome to part 6 of our Fujimi 116th Porsche 959 video build. Before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you click the little bell notification to get notified of all our latest videos, click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Okay, so today we're going to concentrate on the engine. Um, this has been filmed over, uh, yeah, a few of the parts, but I thought I'd keep it all and add it in one. So some of it's old, some of it's new. And then obviously where we end today is literally where we are at with the build. It's there. Um, I've been ahead on every part of these. This one we've actually caught up. It's part six. Um, I think the next part will be all the running gear, so the brakes, uh, dry train, things like that. So that'll be part seven. Um, then we've got, God, where are we at then? Don't know. Then we've got the bodywork to do, light. So it's going to be eight or nine parts, I think, maybe ten. We'll see. But I'm enjoying it. Hopefully you are getting some good feedback out there. I'm really looking forward in this build to getting this engine together because it's been quite a long time coming. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a longer video. It's 40 minutes long, so grab a drink, put your feet up, sit back, have a chill. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them in the comments down below and I'll answer them as and when I can. So, let's go. Great in the spray booth today. We've got some Tamiya LP5. This is pretty thin. We've got all the engine and chassis components, uh, sorry, engine gearbox and rear subframe components, all cleaned up and primed in UMP Black Primer. It's been left overnight and now it's going to need painting in various colours. So we'll start with Tamir LP5, semi gloss black. So this is pre thin. There's somebody asked the other day a question about leaving pre thin paints. Um, for the short amount of time I have them, it's no issue at all. Um, I thin them by, by colour, not just by volume because um, each colour will need thinning um, its own consistency so I know the LP5 off by heart but I've using it for years now um, and I always use this on every kit so I have it pre-thinned in a 40mm bottle um, ready to go like I say it's one of my most go-to used paints we're spraying this through the Apex 0.35 um, 18 psi I'm just going to give it a couple of coats making sure we get all those angles and recess is covered let's give it a nice semi-gloss black color it's a great paint one of my favorite paints it lays down silky smooth um, it's thinned with the Tamiya lacquer thinner and retarder and yeah just a beautiful paint to use Tamiya has really knocked out of the park with these paints as you see the gearbox here lovely bit of plastic very well detailed sadly for the most part it's going to be hidden when it's in the car but it's one of those things we know it's there so all the LP5 semi-gloss blacks done. We've got some AK Interactive Steel now. Um, we're going to do this on our exhaust parts and a few other various parts. And what we're going to do is try and add a bit of tonal variation to all the parts. So just because this says steel on it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be anything painted steel. I don't necessarily go by the colours, uh, the names. I go by the colours. So in my experience, the best way of doing this is to have opposing colours next to each other if you can. Obviously the exhaust would be the same colour, but if you've got a piece of um, metal next to it, do it a slightly different tone. It just adds a little bit of interest to the model, rather than look like a, a mono single piece of metal. Um, I find it does add a little bit of depth here and there. But again, AK Extreme Enamels, they cover well, spray well. Take a while to dry, so take your time. We've got AK Extreme Dual Aluminium now, and again we've picked other parts. I've gone by reference pictures, not by the call outs in the... Uh, instructions because they were way off i did go by one later on down the line and i had to respray it but hey one of those things beautiful color this has a slight gold hue to it and yeah very nice color and this is going to look good on the uh, underneath of the engine so we're just picking parts going by reference pictures i've marked down the instructions of various colors i think they should be say a couple of coats on each the enamel paint covers really well it just takes a while to dry now off the top of my head this is Tamiya LP 61 I think it's the metallic grey 
I forget now, and I don't think I show the bottle. Give me two secs. I'm in the booth. Well, I'm not, but yeah, it's LP61 metallic. Great. There we are. Handy being in the uh, at the bench doing this because I can just lean over and look at the paint. So all these um, rocker covers and the end of the engine, they're all in this colour. Um, it's pretty close to the Porsche colour. It's not exact, but it's my model. It can be whatever colour I want it to be. I could do it pink. And it'd be all up to me. Um, I'm trying to keep an originality to the car as much as I can. I don't want to be going to leery um, bits and bobs here and there, but, you know, it's, it's your own interpretation of the colours. So, we've got our auxiliary belts and pulleys. Um, obviously, the pulleys are black. We've left those in UMP Black Primer because it's quite a good colour. And we've got some, let me think, I think it's AS12 Tamiya. That many paints, and this was done a long time ago, I completely forgot. We've got my circle template. And we're just iron up which is the best size to put it in. We'll pop this in, make sure the belt is covered elsewhere, spray it on, and that should give us our pulley inside. Then we can do a bit of detail painting later on if needed to finish it off properly. But overall, it's a quick, simple, fast way of doing it. I'm pretty sure that is Tamiya AS12 because it was to hand from painting other parts. I'm just giving it a very light misting. Build it up slow. We want it to cover well, but we don't want to blow it through onto the rest of the part. These circle templates are pretty cheap, quite easy to pick up. You can get them online, from artist stores, from Amazon, and there you go, look at that. Very good job. Nice and neat, crisp. Uh, we could also use a circle cutter we used in the last episode. But this is a quick way of doing it, and the AS paints, uh, TS, AS paints dry really quick, so we can almost immediately turn it around and do the other side, and job done. So there's a few belts to do, a few pulleys, they're not all um, silver in the middle, that one to the left, the top left side of it is black. And again, sadly, once the exhaust's on, and this is in the car, you can't really see it anyway, but it's one of those things, as part of the video build, and as part of the build, you should enjoy your kit and try and paint it to the best of your ability. There we go, that's looking apart. On to the next one. And we're all done. So there we go, things been left to dry for a couple of days. We've got those pulleys we're painting in the last uh, segment. And we've got some UMP primer. I'm just going to brush paint any areas where a little bit of metallic spray has crept through. Just touch it up. Um, the UMP primer brushes on really well. Nice thin coat, just build it up. And all we're doing is get rid of any remnants of metallic overspray, which will happen. Black's uh, going to attract a metallic colour, hence why I use it as a primer. Uh, the beauty of the water based paint is you can just rub it off if you need. I actually painted the wrong side of this one. So a little bit of um, water on a cotton bud, and we can wipe it off and make sure we get the right side painted. We go tammy cotton buds are great nice hard compact they're great for wiping bits off now these need some masking the end of these are a different color as is the end of that subframe too so these are part of the exhaust system i believe and we're going to paint the end of these in like a titanium silver gold i'm just looking at reference pictures online yeah it seems to be the way look at where we need to mask to move my lamp and away we go got some of the tammy tape this is the one, two, and three mil. We're just going to mask off the end of these for paint. Detack it as always. So we've got the one mil tape. We get it right into that recess. Make sure it's pushed down with our tweezers. Now, word of warning about the AK Extremes, they are enamel. They do dry faster than other enamels, but I've found on parts like this while you're handling them. After you've handled it for a while, you'll notice the part becomes tacky. So, be aware of this and leave it to dry as long as possible. Um, I did end up rubbing away a little bit of paint here and there, and had to just quickly mask and respray the parts when they were assembled on the engine. Just put a bit of paper behind them, just gave them a little dust over with the paint. But it is easy to wear away because constant handling like this 
Um, if the paint's not quite cured, and being enamel, it will take a long time to fully cure. Um, just be aware. So, like, if you watch my spray booth video, that I have several AK Extreme colors that are my go-to's. I'm probably going to replace these with AS or LP, sorry, TS or LP paints, purely and simply the lacquers dry so much faster um, that I think that's the way forward, to be honest. Um, I do love the AK Extremes, but on parts like this, you've got to handle them a lot. Um, they do become tacky, and it does start to become a bit of an issue. So I think I'm going to replace the enamels with lacquers. So I'll go through the colour range, pick some suitable colours for steel, aluminium, so on and so forth and uh, we'll try and not phase them out but we'll try and replace them with true lacquers like i say another tedious boring job but again it's going to add color tonal variation to the two parts i'm going to go with like a um, gold titanium color on these to give them a little bit of a interest look i want to put a wash on there um, and hopefully look quite good and certainly look the part so yeah, we're on to the 6mm Tamiya tapes. In modelling, you really can't beat Tamiya. Um, just all round for kits, tools, paints, everything. They've really got everything nailed. There's no, there's not many bad Tamiya products. There's a handful, um, but there's not many at all. They really do knock out the park with the tools and the sundries. There we go. Not bad, quite easy. So we've done all the rest of them and they're ready to be painted. Now we've got to mask up our engine block. It's red on the top. I've no idea why. If anyone knows why these are painted red on the top, please let me know. Again, we've got some of the Tamiya 2 mil tape. I'm just gonna follow the engine line. You can actually see where it's painted. Again, sadly, most of this is hidden under um, the components on the engine. But you can see some of it. So again, time taken now. Well spent. So DTAC as always. Pop it on. Follow the line. There's a demarcation line across the top. You can just see it there. I'm not going to follow that for reference. And there we go. And then we'll repeat that on the other side. Make sure it's burnished down, mask the rest of it, and then we can mask our, well, we can spray our red paint. There we go, the other side going down now. So, a few of you have noticed and have commented on my watches. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of Citizen watches. Uh, I kind of collected them for a while, got nearly all the ones I wanted. And I put a different watch on every day. These are filmed over several days. I am not absolutely mental and change my watch every hour. Um, I put a different one on every day because I, I do have a few. I've literally got one for every day of the month. Um, <laughs> I uh, Yeah, I do enjoy my watches. I like the Citizens. I think they're beautiful watches. They work well. Um, so when you see the watches change, it's not me having a wardrobe change midday. It's literally the next day. Um, I've got all sorts from... Eco drive, solar powered, automatic um, watches, and uh, some of them are absolutely beautiful. I really do like them, and a few of you have commented on them. Um, so yeah, play spot the watch. Somebody you can spot in different videos and <laughs> post it in the comments. I know I'm a bit nuts, but hey, I enjoy it. It keeps me sane. It's another little hobby of mine, and uh, yeah, I enjoy wearing them, and I enjoy waking up each day and picking a different one to wear. Sounds a bit sad, but I actually do. It's quite a nice thing to be able to do. They're not the most expensive for watches, but I can enjoy them and tower them, and that's all that matters. So there we go, there's the other side mast now. Just making sure it's all lined up well, and then we'll fill in the edges with some Tamiya tape. Get the rest of it sprayed, uh, mast, sorry, and then we can go to the spray booth and get it painted. So masking can be very tedious. It can be very boring. Thankfully, this didn't take four hours like the interior, so quite pleasant to do. Actually, a bit weird and quite like uh, the uh, masking, so it's not too bad to do. But be thorough, be patient, 
and uh, be methodical in what you're doing and you'll get it all covered pretty quick and you will get better masking jobs and also don't cheap out on the tape don't use cheap decorators tape or frog tape certainly use frog tape for filling in large areas but for the actual masking line use a good quality tape and in my opinion um tamia absolutely tamia all day long followed by azu great tape really good does the job absolutely perfect so we're all masked up we've got tamia lp7 we're going to thin this as usual, but we're going to add a little bit of the flat base from Tamiya. So all I've done here is add a little globule of it in there. We've mixed it up thoroughly. What the flat base does, it will make the gloss lacquer a bit flatter. And it will depend how much you put in there. I didn't want it totally flat. I just wanted to take the shine off it. I'm just going to give it two or three light coats. It'll take a little bit more to cover because we're painting over silver. And we're just going to get it all nicely evenly painted. We don't want to hose it on. We don't want to leach for our masking. So put a little bit on, put it to one side, come back again in 5-10 minutes. Now the great thing of having multiple airbrushes is you can use them for different things. So we've got my lacquer and my metallic one. So literally uncouple the air hose with a quick release. We've got some Tamiya AS12 again in here. Pop it in the airbrush and we can spray this while we're waiting for the red to dry on our engine block so these are the i think these are the air reservoirs for the um, air suspension on the car that raises and lowers it so looking at references they look to be silver the instructions called out for silver too so silver we went for um on those parts i just picked it up that the exhaust parts we picked earlier we're going to do those in like a titanium gold so again we put that down give this couple more coats well one more coat i would just keep alternating until everything is sprayed here we want but you can see the coverage really nice there now i want to dry it is a nice satin red it's not gloss it's not matte and like i say you could alter how much you put in there by adding a bit more of the the matte medium so my spoons uh we're now picking a color for those exhaust parts i'm looking for like a titanium gold color i've already seen it it's right to the far right of me it was the very first color on the spoon rack i'm just having a search through for any others and this is the beauty of having these. It's literally a colour palette right in front of you. And I think we went with, yes, it's TS87. I can't remember the actual name of the paint. But like I say, we're just going for a titanium gold look. Now it looks like I'm putting a lot down. It's not. It really isn't. We're about 18 PSI. 0.35. Uh, sorry, the 0.2 needle on this. My bad. Um, and it's not putting a lot of paint on at all. We're just misting it on. To get a first little coat on then we'll come back in a bit and add some more dries really fast really quick so you can push it a little bit more than usual it's one of the few lacquers that actually likes to go on wet now i didn't show any on masking of the dashboard and the interior last time i felt a bit bad i kind of missed out on the camera um so i thought i'll show you us unmasking the engine instead so yeah it's a lot quicker than actually masking not going to show the whole thing as we'll be here all day but for the most part it's very quick and easy to remove make sure that tape's been detected before you put it on it's over a lacquer paint it's well and truly cured and there we go absolutely perfect demarcation no bleed nothing at all and you can see it looks a lot more glossy there in the cam than it actually is it's a nice satin matte effect all our components laid out for the engine there's quite a lot it's quite a nice detailed engine on this thing so they're all there ready to be glued in place and uh yeah i've been looking forward to this bit although i have been putting it off for a while this segment was filled a well the original segment was filled a long time ago um so yeah nice to get to this stage so we're going to use some our perfect pen from loctite and start gluing all our parts on we're going to do them in the order the instructions call for what we're going to do, we're going to play a little bit of music and speed it up so you're not so high listening to me waffle on.
and there we go so there's our engine all assembled looking good no real issues there at all the exhaust is a little bit tricky um but soon went into place no problem at all um yeah it looks good for an out of the box engine it's quite well detailed needs a little bit of tweaking here and there but overall really happy with that looks really good so now we've got our ht leads to do now the kit comes with black wire I thought it had a little bit of more visual interest to it. It had some red, so I've got some red of roughly the same gauge. And we're going to follow these instructions, which look an absolute nightmare, but we'll soon see. So we've got some spark plug, sorry, we've got some HD lead clip holders. So we're going to cut these out, clean them up, paint them up in black, and then we can use those to keep the HD leads together and mount them to the engine frame, well, body as well. Okay, so cut them off, hold them some tweezers, give them a clean up. We've got a 400 customizable sander flat cutter size and a buffer make sure the edge is gone spin it round rinse repeat for all six of them job done then we can mount them on cocktail sticks and get some black primer down on them and we will leave them black primer color because uh, it looked quite good like that so this is the red wire i've got this is from true detail i think about this for quite some time you can see there are various marks on there a to f i think it is or e rather and you can see each one corresponds to the HT lead on the engine. So we need to cut one of each. Various lengths. So we've got some wire cutters. Cut to size. And there we go. Now we've got to kind of guess this now because we've got that HT lead holder that's attached to the left hand side of that uh, rocker cover. And we've got this clip and we kind of need to guess where it goes to a allow us enough lead at one end to go to the engine of varying lengths and then enough to get us back to the uh, distributor cap so let's test this out and see how it works we've got some rocket yellow ca glue we're going to put a good dollop on our color cup somebody asked me today why i use these this way round i find it easier to get to the glue if you put it inside, the capillary reaction carries it all round and it tends to not pool as well as it does on top. There's a little tiny indentation on the top of these cups and I find it perfect. For a cocktail stick, we're going to carefully sharpen it up to a sharp point. That'll make the super application a bit more accurate. Or accurate, not accurate. So we're going to hold that, we're going to add a dab of CA glue and then we're going to grab our corresponding wire, which is the longest one, goes right in the center. We're going to guess where it goes. So we're popping it there like so. Then we'll grab all the other corresponding ones and pop them next to it. So looking at our instructions, we're working the other way around. We're looking which ones are shortest, which ones are longest. So I'm just having a look and I'm going to think that one's, yeah, it's the same, about the same length as that one. Yeah, we'll put it there. It'll do just fine. So try and work out in your head roughly what you think. Luckily, if they're too long, they can be cut short. And thankfully, that was the case with all these. But just keep an eye on those instructions. Follow them. You shouldn't go wrong, really. So this side of the engine wasn't too bad. The other side was a bit trickier because of the length of them. Um, to guess the length was a bit more difficult, but I kind of got it spot on. One of them only just reached on the other side. But overall, I kind of guessed pretty well. So there we go. We're happy we got those in. We'll let those dry for a couple of minutes. Make sure they're all fully pushed home. Got no excess CA glue hanging out. Now we can offer up where the clip will sit, the mount. And look, um, A, the length of the wire we need cutting and the bend it's going to need to get it in place. So we're going to do a little bit of test fitting to get it about right. I'm not too worried about the upper wires that go to the heat, uh, distributor. You need to snip the ends off to get better wire because these fit into the actual cam cover itself. We're just bending this roughly. To the shape I think it should be. So offer it up again. Put the cable clip where you think it should be, and then look at the wire. And it's just a case of eyeing up where it's going, 
keep bending it, keep cutting it to size until we get all three of them to line up. They can all be glued in place. We can glue the clip down and then we put the HT leads into the distributor cap head as well. Now, one thing I do notice in a minute is I've sprayed the distributor cap the wrong color. The color color allowed to color for red. Like I said, it's literally the only part I followed the instruction color call out on. And then looking at it, when I was looking at the engine wiring, I thought it should be distributor cap, which is brownie red color. So we took it off. We painted it in LP18, whole red, or dull red, sorry. And that gives us a, a much better color. But you won't see it till later on, because it's about in a minute or so when I noticed and think yeah that's not the right color let's take that off I didn't show it being sprayed because well there's no point really I can't show everything unfortunately I know some people are like oh I want to see the color but this is 40 minutes long already I've cut out loads of footage already these videos the footage I get for this was four hours long and I have to cut it down to this acceptable length um, or it would end up with 20 parts of this build I'm sure you guys and girls out there might love that. Um, yeah, that drags the build on immensely for me. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this build. I don't want to get bogged down, lose the mojo on it. I'm enjoying it. I want to crack on and get it done. And I'm a behind apart every time. This is the first video where I'm actually up to date now. Where you see me end today is where I'm at. I've been that far ahead with the build. Um, I've had extra footage for each one. So yeah, it's a fine line between showing everything you want to see and getting through it without boring everyone to tears. And repeating everything so there we go that's all lined up quite happy with that we're going to put some ca glue right in the center holes of the cam cover rocker cover cam cover whatever you want to call it there we go a couple of careful drops and grab our pre-bended wire and we'll just get each one in individually start with the middle Line it up, push it home, give it a sec to dry, and then we'll do each other one. Work through them all till they're all done. Quite tricky. You need good uh, hand-eye coordination. But pretty simple to do. Again, another lengthy, laborious job, but again, it adds massive detail to the engine. And uh, I think adding the red HT leads just adds a little bit more visual interest than them just being black. And there we go, that's the third one in. Hold it for a few seconds, and there we go. Happy with that. Make sure everything's straight where you want it. We can still manipulate the wire around. We can straighten it up by pushing it over and getting the angles. Now I'm just going to add a dab of glue behind that clip, like this. So we pull it out a little bit, add a little dab. And using our tweezers and fingers, we'll push it forward where we want. Again, hold for a few seconds. Once it's got some purchase on it, we can leave it be. There we go. We hold it with the tweezers. There we go. So leave that to one side for 10 minutes. The Sega will properly cure and go off. And then we can get the HT leads into the distributor. So yeah, I like the red. I think it looks good. Contrasts well on the engine. Adds a little bit more visual interest. Once we get a wash on this, it'll look a lot better. Not too bad at all. So now we're going to try and bend the leads round to the distributor. And this is where I realized I painted the wrong color. I'm looking at it thinking, that's not right. Yeah, no. That definitely doesn't look right. Quick reference online. I think, yeah, that is wrong. So I'm just lining these up to make sure they reach. I'm trying to get them in the firing order it shows on the uh, instructions. If I've got them in the wrong order, I do apologize. I'm just going to cut it to size. And there we go. So that's that side done. We've repainted all the uh, distributor cap. Much happy with the colour now. Uh, like I say, we've got our left, right hand side, I suppose it is the engine. HT leads cut roughly to size again. We do exactly the same. We put our clip on. We're going to angle these so they fit into the cam cover. And then we need to mount the wires over, well, under the power steering pump, I think it is, over the top. And then over the top of what I think is the alternator. I can't remember now what it is. One of them is one of each. I can't remember which is which. Um, but we've got to get them over those two ancillary components. And then we can get them into the um, distributor cap. Get them all glued down. 
and jobs are good. So, yeah, we've got a bit longer on the wire this time. Like I say, one of these only just reaches. Quite lucky. Did have to start again. So I'm just weighing it up, making sure we have got the right length. And get all these angles done. We can glue them in place. Get the clip glued down like we did on the other side. And job done. Like I say, it's a great little engine, this, from Fujimi. Um, it could be better. I could have super detailed it more. Um, but for what we can see in the back of the engine compartment, I think it's going to look pretty good. All being well, anyway. There we go. So we've fed the wires underneath there. I'm pretty sure that's a power steering pump. We'll put a clip on. We've glued it to the top of the engine. We've separated the wires so they're cleanly spaced. Pop it in place. We're going to put a little dab of CA glue on. And hold it. And then we'll do another clip on the other side. Like so. And then pop our leads into the distributor. Like so. They don't even really need glue. They fit in there really well. We make sure everything's level. Everything's curved properly. That nothing looks odd. All the leads are spaced out correctly. And yeah, I'm quite happy with those red leads. I think they look good. They had a bit more interest in the engine. Rather than just being plain old boring black. All our different engine colours look good. They contrast against each other. Had a little bit more visual interest. It's looking good. So we've got the Tamiya panel line wash. Which is a panel line wash. I've seen somebody asking the day what it was. I think the name explains it all really. It's enamel based. I'm just going to apply it to every recess, every gap, anything and everywhere we can get a wash on. Let it dry and remove the excess if needed. Now, if you put this on properly, thin enough, I like to thin the bottle a bit more than it comes standard. I put a little bit of odorless mineral spirit in from Windsor Newton. Thin it a bit more. Um, with it thinned, it never really needs to remove much. Uh, the capillary reaction just puts enough down. And this adds a bit of depth now to the parts. Just makes them look a bit more interesting and less bland. And again, it'll add to the overall look of the model. Like I say, it's good stuff. It's enamel based. doesn't take too long to dry. Removes pretty easily. Um, the only problem is it's really hard to get a hold of in the UK. It's not one of the officially imported items. Uh, it'd be down to the safety labels and packaging probably. But you can source it from overseas, from the Far East, eBay, etc. So it is worth sourcing because it is good stuff. And I'm literally, if it's got a recess or it's raised, it gets a wash. It's as simple as that. If we can get a wash in there, I can. Now, the other thing I did contemplate doing um, was dry brushing the gearbox. Uh, I was going to dry brush it a light grey. Just had a little bit of visual interest. A grey wash would have looked a bit too odd, I think. But when I test fitted it in the car, you can't really see it anyway. So I thought, okay, we'll leave it as is. And we'll just pop it in, see what it looks like once it's in the car. And we'll decide in the next part what we do. What we can see um, is worth doing. We'll give it a very light dry brush. Just add a bit of depth to it. But overall, it's looking good. Quite happy with this. Happy with the colour choices I've made. Happy how it's gone together. Looks pretty good. It's a strange engine. I'll give it that. I think these were about 400 horsepower back in the day. I think the Sport went up to 425 or something silly. I can't remember now. I had to look at the references. Just a little bit more horsepower. But as I said in a previous video, this was the most technologically advanced car in the day. I think it was. This had many, many features on it. If you go to the last video, there's a link in the description of a good walk around of the car showing all. The features of the car and yeah it was way ahead of its time full of um well some pretty amazing add-ons for the day and there we go we let the wash dry we wiped it off as much as we can we retouched any any paint work and needed touching up and yeah that's looking the part i'm happy with that like i say the gearbox not 100 sure where to dry brush it we're going to mount it in the um chassis now you can see that texture paint we put on last time give the chassis a good look it does look like under seal i think a little bit so there's two locator points at the front two at the back the back ones are a little bit tricky to get in so my recommendation is get the back ones in first i did put the front ones in first and then had a bit of trouble getting the back in 
But yeah, pop the back in first, um, get it in place, a bit of CA glue, jobs are good, in, and away we go. And as you can see, you can see a little bit of the gearbox, so I think we will give her a bit of a light dry brushing, just add a little bit of interest. Bit of a shame that you can't see most of it. But hey, I guess it's the nature of the car. You can't even see those parts we airbrushed silver at the front. It's a bit of a shame. But hey, just one of those things. So like I said, the rear section is a little bit tricky to get in place. So just make sure you don't break anything. Don't put an excess pressure on something you shouldn't. Just take your time. Once the rear is in, the front goes in really easy because you can manipulate it a little bit more. So we've added Seagull already. I'm just going to push it in at the back. Make sure it's all straight and level. Make sure those parts are in the right place. And once we're happy with that in, we'll push the front in place. And jobs are good. So nice to get to this step. And there we go. There's our engine in. We stuck our interior down as well. Just four locating points inside. And this is starting to come alive now. This is starting to look good. Engine's looking really good. Sadly, a lot of it is hidden. It's just one of those things, unfortunately. But there we go. Okay then, so yeah, that's looking good. I'm happy with that. It's nice to get the uh, engine in, the transmission in, and the interior in. It's looking the part now. I've not offered the body up yet. I'm kind of nervous too. I think I might have to do it later um, and get some pictures of it because it's looking good. And I'm quite eager to see how it all fits together. So yeah, part seven of constructing all the running gear. So we'll do the drive track, drive shafts, the differential. Um, is it just one or is it going to be two? It's just one because it's in the rear part of the gearbox. Um, I know there's two, but it's built in is what I meant. It's already in there. Um, brakes uh there's a few more engine components that need to go up over the top because they go around the actual chassis itself um and then we can progress to the body and get the glass done the lights done uh the body all polished up and shiny not that it's not shiny now um but we can really start to see how it's going to look and yeah get a bit nervous now because i really hope those doors fit well they fit just kind of hope that they open and shut it'd be really nice if they did if not, we're going to have to glue them short, and that'll be a bit of a shame. But it is what it is. Wherever it goes is the best looking model. Um, it's just one of those things. So there we go. We'll be back in part seven. I don't know when it'll be because, as I said in the video, every one of these videos, I've been ahead. So I've only seen part six. I've already filmed most of part seven. So that's why I'm getting on so quick. Now I've got to do the work to get the next video built out. So it's not going to be a couple of days. It's probably going to be like Wednesday maybe Thursday we'll get it done um, but we'll get it out there as quick as possible because I'm enjoying this in a minute quite eager to get it done um, so yeah keep an eye out and it'll be up pretty soon so as always got any comments or criticisms or whatever pop them down below don't always listen to the critique if you want to critique me on it fire ahead uh, this is my model and I'm building it how I want the colours I want so it's just one of those things um, but I do read every single comment and I am slowly replying to them all. There's hundreds and I do appreciate them all. So please leave a comment down below. Questions, whatever you want to ask or say, pop it down below. And of course, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification so you get notified of the latest videos and give the, the video a thumbs up or thumbs down, wherever you think is required. Um, and yeah, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum upretail.com and get a lot of the products I show in my videos. There's a big list of products down below in the description as well, which shows most of the things I use in it. Everything from the Mac, the camera, the lights, paint tools, everything's in there near enough. Uh, if you've got any questions about anything, again, just far away. And check my Paul ISM Facebook page and Instagram channel as well. I will catch you all next time for part seven. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.